name is Melody Weintraub and I teach middle school art and today we're going to learn about how to make a gradient scale. To start the gradient scale this column is pressure. You use a pencil for this column. For stipple you will be using a sharpie and for hatch and cross hatching columns you'll also use an ultra fine point sharpie. Okay, let's start. The gradient scale goes from highlight all the way down through to dark dark. So in dark dark you will fill in this square with your ebony pencil as dark as possible. When you're doing still life drawing and going from shape to form you will use this scale to check and recheck the values in your drawing. Now I'm going to move up to the dark medium and I want this square to be almost as dark as the one below. It needs to just be a shade lighter. And that's how it goes all the way up the scale. You always want the square or the degree above the last one to be lighter than the one below. Now when you're doing the pressure column with pencil you know to if you get it too dark you can erase to get it lighter okay and then I'm going to move up to the dark light this is still a dark tone but it's slightly lighter than the last tone Continue all the way up the scale until you get all the way up to highlight and when you get to highlight you leave it blank okay when you're doing this if you want to blend I'm using a blending stump to blend. If you ever need the blending stump, maybe it'll get something other, other than uh, graphite on it, or you just want a clean start, you take an emery board and you sand it. Never peel a blending stump. And then to blend, you press down heavy where the lines are dark to blend the pencil lines together. And then you lighten up a little as you go up the scale. Sometimes when I get up into the light light values, the light values up here, I may just use the blending stump to fill in the square. Okay, I finished the pressure column here with pencil and now I'm going to move on to stipple. And for stippling, you put dots closer together for the darker tones, being careful to protect the tip on this ultra fine point sharpie. You don't want to jab the paper, you're just lightly tapping it. But the dots are closer together when it's dark. And as you move up the scale, they will be farther apart. And remember that you can always go back in and put more dots, but you can't take them away. Here's a student sample where the student did the stipple column. And as you can see, the dots are closer together in the dark and they get lighter as they go up. Once I finished this column, I would move on to the hatching. And for hatching, you do diagonal lines. They're closer together where it's darker. And then as you move up, and once again, I would fill in the whole square. As I move up the scale, they will get farther apart. So dark medium, they still need to be pretty close together, but a little bit farther apart. And make them as straight as you can. Here's a student sample. Hatching. Now for cross hatching, you do the diagonal lines filling in the square. Lighter. And now I'm going to the opposite direction. This is cross hatching. So you start off by hatching, and then you add lines in the opposite direction for cross hatching. And here is a student sample. Um, if you want a copy of this gradation chart, you can go to my website, MelodyWeintraub.com, and on my blog, I put one there that's free for you to use. Enjoy!